By definition, a moon is a natural astronomical object that is in orbit around a much more massive parent planet. A look at the gigantic subglacial oceans, fascinating cryovolcanism, and other unique phenomena that we find on many satellites shows that the constant companions of planets are stunning cosmic worlds. As is well known, the first manned moon landing in 1969 was to be one of the most significant milestones in space travel. Although mankind succeeded in setting foot on the natural satellite of the Earth, this does not mean that we have solved all the lunar mysteries of our solar system. One satellite in particular has puzzled experts for some time, Saturn's moon Iapetus. What great mysteries still shroud this celestial body? We'll reveal to you now. Want to accompany us on our galactic excursions to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. Feel free to show us that you like the content of our videos with a thumbs up. Iepetus, Saturn's enigmatic moon. Modern space probes, complex space telescopes, world-spanning research facilities. In view of the technical possibilities that experts have at their disposal nowadays, we quickly forget the simple means used for the investigation of the firmament in preceding centuries. While for a long time, people had to rely mainly on their naked eyes to study the night sky, the invention of the telescope in the 17th century ushered in a genuine astronomical revolution. As a result of this groundbreaking achievement, new astronomical objects were added to the star charts with regularity. The four large moons of Jupiter, the various phases of Venus, and the rings of Saturn were also identified with the help of the first telescopes. Somewhat later, in 1671, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini achieved another major breakthrough, the discovery of Saturn's moon Iapetus. But shortly after the first sighting of the satellite, the astronomical object raised questions among experts. Originally, Cassini had discovered the natural satellite on the west side of the iconic ring planet. However, when the Italian later searched the eastern side of Saturn for Iapetus, there was no trace of the celestial body. In fact, the companion of the ringed planet would not present itself again until 1705, when Cassini conducted a new investigation with a far more advanced telescope model. Of course, the research instruments of that time cannot be compared with the ultra-modern equipment of today. The corresponding telescopes now provide us with insights into wavelengths that are not visible to the human eye. While some unmanned space probes have already paid a direct visit to even the most remote representatives of our planetary system. For example, we now know that Saturn enjoys the constant company of at least 82 moons. While there are many small, relatively young satellites in the main rings of the gas planet, Saturn has eight prominent satellites outside its main orbits, which are always the focus of scientific attention. Namely, these are Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, Rhea, Titan, Hyperion, and finally Iepetus. It is the latter, outermost representative of the eight prominent Saturn moons that exhibits some characteristics, causing heated debates within the ranks of experts. The Mysteries of the Satellite with an average diameter of 900 miles, Iepetus is the third largest of all Saturn satellites. The celestial body orbits its parent planet at an average distance of nearly 2.2 million miles. As a result, clearly 80 days pass before Iepetus has completely orbited the iconic ringed planet. The orbital inclination of the compact astronomical body is particularly striking. In fact, the celestial body moves in a completely different plane around Saturn than its cosmic counterparts. The other seven of Saturn's eight major satellites orbit around the same plane at an inclination of 1.6 degrees. The orbit of Iapetus, however, is inclined 15.5 degrees with respect to the Saturnian system. Basically, there are three accepted models to explain how a natural satellite can form. Either the satellite is formed from a circumplanetary disk as a result of a large galactic collision, releasing gigantic amounts of debris, or by the gravitational capture of a massive parent planet. 
due to the fact that Iepetus is the third largest satellite of Saturn and has a material composition similar to its known counterparts, it's difficult even for the most renowned experts to understand which gravitational events ultimately gave the satellite its unusual orbital characteristics and led to the immense spatial distance between the satellite and its planet. Enigmatic Equator However, these conditions are not the only peculiarities that today, 350 years after the first discovery of the celestial body, continue to puzzle experts. The unusual equator of Saturn's moon is another, just as in the case of the Sun and the Earth. Also, Iepetus does not exhibit a perfect spherical form. While the Sun and the Earth are slightly curved along their equatorial planes and at the same time appear somewhat compressed at the polar regions, the appearance of Iepetus does not seem to match its real motion patterns. The shape of our blue home planet is created by the so-called hydrostatic equilibrium. In simple terms, this is the interplay of gravitational attraction and other various physical processes that give a celestial body an approximate position in space as a result of its own rotation. As already mentioned, the mean diameter of Iapetus is 900 miles, while its pole diameter is 885 miles. These ratios would also correspond to hydrostatic equilibrium if Saturn's moon needed only 16 hours to rotate on its own axis. However, since the satellite has a bound rotation, which means that its rotation is not independent of the orbital period around Saturn, the satellite takes almost 80 days to complete this task. Another mystery related to the celestial body's equator was registered during the Cassini mission. The images that the unmanned spacecraft transmitted to Earth a few years ago showed that the satellite's equatorial plane is graced by an imposing mountain ridge more than 800 miles long. Particularly striking is the fact that the train of ridges extends to within a few degrees of latitude exactly on the geographic equator of Iepetus. In detail, the mountain range has a width of up to 12.5 miles, while it rises a maximum of 8 miles above the surface of Saturn's moon. How the ominous equatorial ridge was formed has not yet been conclusively deciphered. With regard to this highly exciting question, experts are currently putting forward various explanations. On the one hand, it's conceivable that the elevations arose as a result of tectonic processes. This process, known as folding, led to the formation of the Alps on our blue home planet. Another theory is that once a crack in the crust of the moon was formed and liquid material from the underground reached the surface, accumulating and solidifying there into today's mountain crest. Also, the debris of a crashed Saturn ring or the impact of a large asteroid are discussed as origin of the mountain range. Recent investigations, however, led to the theory that Iepetus rotated very fast in its earliest phase and was heated by radioactive substances. As a result of the high rotation speed, the celestial body has a bulged shape. After the activity of the isotopes decreased and the moon cooled down, the bulged material could have accumulated at the former highest point, or in other words, along the equator, and could have finally frozen. A moon with two faces. Last but not least, we would like to take a look together with you at a mystery of Saturn's satellite that is already apparent at first glance. The proverbial two faces of the celestial body. The surface of Iepetus is characterized by two regions that are clearly different from each other. While the bright side of the satellite has an albedo of 0.5 to 0.6, reflecting more than 50% of all incident solar radiation, the opposite region appears as dark as coal. Which processes gave the celestial body its split appearance is still literally written in the stars. The dark materials could possibly be deposits of organic compounds, such as those found on the surface of comets. However, the origin of the dark material is not clear. Also, the thickness of the layer is not known. If it is thin, it would have to be formed constantly due to different processes. One theory says that the material possibly comes from the inside of the celestial body, having been hurled as a result of impacts and volcanism to the surface. On the other hand, there is the theory that it was an event from the outside that started the formation of the dark area, 
According to this, a thin layer of an undefined substance reached the surface of the celestial body, where it fueled a melting or sublimation effect that brought the underlying dark rock masses to the surface. Furthermore, some experts consider it likely that the material in question originated from Saturn's moon Phoebe. There it could have been set free by the impact of tiny meteorites and have accumulated afterwards in Iepetus's hemisphere. This assumption is strengthened by the discovery of the so-called Phoebe Ring whose material originates from Saturn's namesake satellite, since Iepetus moves through the fringes of this ring during its galactic journey. A corresponding transfer of material seems quite plausible. However, because Phoebe's coloration differs somewhat from the color of the dark deposits on Iepetus, other researchers place the origin of the material on Titan. Now it's your turn! What do you think about Saturn's mysterious moon, Iepetus? We look forward to your comments! Would you like to see more exciting articles on the topic of outer space? Then click on one of the images in the credits to go to the other videos on our channel. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.